We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. I was out in the countryside one morning when I heard voices. But there was nobody around. Then I realised the voices were coming from under my feet. It was a family of moles and I could hear what they were saying. We're supposed to go to tea with Grandpa Mole, but there's a big dog who keeps sticking his head down our hole. It isn't safe to go out. When I looked around, I could see why they were so worried. A big dog was digging away nearby. Look! There he is now! said the moles. We're never going to get to Grandpa's. I knew I had to do something, so I picked up a stick and waved it at the dog. Here boy, here boy, there's a good dog, I shouted, and when he saw the stick, he got all excited. <coughs> then I threw the stick as far away as I possibly could, and the dog chased it way into the distance. The moles were so pleased. Why don't you come along to Grandpa's for tea with us, they said. So that's what I did, and they told Grandpa all about our adventure. Little Cook to the rescue once again! That was a great adventure! We need a story to help us cook! Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. One day, I decided to ask Father Christmas a really important question. So I climbed onto my wooden spoon and flew to the North Pole. By the time I got there, it was Christmas Eve. I knocked on the door and Father Christmas said, Ho, 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 little cook small. Merry Christmas and how can I help you? Father Christmas, I said, I wondered what you would like for a Christmas present. Well, said Father Christmas, I'd like some time. Some time? I said. Yes, every Christmas we get lots and lots of snow here in the North Pole. But with all these presents to wrap and deliver, I never have time to build a snowman. Well, to be perfectly honest, I wasn't surprised he didn't have time to build a snowman. The place was in absolute chaos. There was wrapping paper and toys and mess everywhere. I decided to help. I asked the elves to get into a long line. The first elves finished making the toys. They passed the presents along to be wrapped and I stuck the bows and labels on. The rest of the elves passed the presents outside so that Father Christmas could stack them onto the sleigh. We had finished the job in no time. Come on everyone, we can build a snowman. Hooray! Father Christmas was really excited. He couldn't believe he had some time. Soon Father Christmas got onto his sleigh to deliver the presents to all the children all over the world. As he rode off, Father Christmas declared it was the best Christmas present he'd ever had. Little Cooks at a Rescue once again. That was a great adventure. We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. Not too long ago, I went on a walking trip to the mountains. It was very cold. Brrr, and thick snow lay everywhere. Suddenly, I heard a voice. It sounded rather unhappy. Oh, deary, deary me. It moaned. I looked all around, but I couldn't see anyone. Just bright white snow everywhere. Who are you? I called. My name is Jan the Yeti, came the reply. Well, where are you? I shouted. And suddenly, I bumped into the leg of a very big, very furry, very white creature. Oh, there you are, I smiled. But Jan the Yeti didn't smile back. In fact, he looked very sad. No one can ever see me, he sighed. When my friends Brian Bear and Monty Moose come to play with me, 
They can hardly ever find me, cause my fur is the same colour as the snow. So they just go home again, and I get so lonely. I tried to cheer Yan up. I bet you're great at hide and seek, I said. What's the use of playing hide and seek if no one can find you? Replied Yan. Then I had an idea. I think I can help you. I'll be back tomorrow. See you later. If you can find me again, said Yan sadly. When I got back to where I was staying, I got a big ball of bright red wool out of my rucksack and I spent the whole night knitting something special for Yan. The next day, after a long, long search, I bumped into Yan again. From out of my rucksack, I brought a very big, bright red bobble hat. Woohoo! Put this on, I told him. Yan did, and it fitted perfectly. If you wear this hat when your friends are coming to play, they'll have no trouble spotting you in the snow, I told him. Yan was so happy that he picked me up very carefully <laughs> and gave me a big soft yeti hug. Way! A very warm little cook to the rescue once again! That was a great adventure. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's Adventures in the Big World. Let me see. As you probably know, Cinderella lived with her two ugly sisters who were very unkind to her. One day, the ugly sisters were invited to the prince's ball. Cinderella so wanted to go, but they shouted, No! You must stay in the kitchen and sweep. I was passing by the house, and I heard her crying, so I went in. Oh, Cinders, whatever's the matter? I asked. My sisters have gone to the ball, but here I am, all alone with my broom, just sweeping. She banged her broom down on the floor, and suddenly there was a puff of smoke. Cinderella's fairy godmother stood before us and said, I am your fairy godmother. You will go to the ball. I will turn your rags into a beautiful gown. I will turn the pumpkin into a glittering coach. The two white mice into two white horses. The brown rat into a handsome coachman. And do you know what? She waved her wand and the spell worked. Apart from one thing. The brown rat had not turned into a handsome coachman. He was definitely still a big brown rat. Oh no! cried Cinderella. I have my gown, I have my coach, I have my horses, but who will drive me to the ball? That's when I had an idea. I climbed aboard the coach, grabbed hold of the horse's reins and shouted, Giddy up! And off we went! Cinderella danced and danced with the handsome prince and, as we all know, at midnight she had to run home before the spell was broken. The prince had to find her. The only clue was the glass slipper she had left behind. When he found her, he asked for her hand in marriage and Cinderella lived happily ever after. Little Cook to the rescue once again! That was a great adventure! <laughs> Way! <laughs> How many jam sandwiches have you eaten today?